enums are something that exist in many different programming languages, and if you're starting in C-sharp, you've without a doubt heard about using enums. As programmers, enums give us this nice balance between something that feels like it's human readable as well as being numeric at the same time. However, because enums are something that looks like a string and an integer at the same time, there's a lot of opportunity for misusing. In this video, we're going to look at the basics of enums, including how we can define them, how their values are assigned, and then look at some differences between string and integers when it comes to enums. And before we jump over to Visual Studio, just a quick reminder to subscribe to my weekly newsletter and I'll put the link in one of the comments below. The newsletter is totally free and with that you get a weekly email that has software engineering topics as well as .NET examples. I try to include exclusive articles as well as early access to some of these YouTube videos. I feel that my big differentiator from other creators is that as a software engineering manager I can offer you some different perspective that's not just writing code. So check it out, it's totally free and with that said let's jump right over to Visual Studio and look at some enums. So in Visual Studio, I've gone ahead and defined a custom enum that is called Day of the Week. Now, there is a similar one that already exists built into .NET, but this is the one that I'm creating just for this example. And you can see that this enum, which is spanning from lines 24 through 33, has all of the days of the week defined in the order that they appear. I'm starting with Monday. You could choose to do this in any which order you want, but that's what I'm doing in this example. Now, enums by default start at a value of zero assigned to the first item that you see in this enum. So that would mean that Monday has an associated value of zero with it, Tuesday, one, Wednesday, two, and so on and so forth, incrementing by one each time. To be more verbose, this is exactly what the values translate to, as you can see here. I've just gone ahead and explicitly assigned them values 0 through 6. When you're declaring enums, you have the option to either let them be automatically incremented, you can assign them directly, or you can do a bit of a hybrid where you just give it an initial starting value. And what that might look like is starting off with Monday being assigned to the value 100, and then I can allow it to automatically increment from there where Tuesday becomes 101, Wednesday 102, and so on and so forth. So that might be a little bit weird to do, so in this example, I'm just going to allow it to be implicitly assigned values. So we will start at zero and have it automatically increment throughout the rest of the days of the week. All right, with our enum back to its original form, let's go see what we can do with this now. All right, so at the top of my screen now, I have an example where we can go investigate what we can do with this enum value. So all that I've done is I've assigned the enum value of Monday to a variable called day of the week. Next, I'm just writing out a header that says example one so we can see that in the console. And then from there, I have a couple of things for us to check. So if we were to just write out day of the week to the console, what would we expect to see? Would it say something like day of the week dot Monday, which is like the full type value and the enum value along with it? Would we just expect to see Monday because we're going to get a string representation? Or would we see zero because the first enum value that we have in that set of days of the week starts at zero? Well, when we go to run this, we'll find out what we expect, but this is a thought exercise that as I go to explain the next two lines, I want you to think through. So the next two lines, five and six, try to play on this a little bit more. Can we actually equate the day of the week to being the string Monday? When we think about enums as programmers, we're sort of getting this string representation right in code, and that allows us to read it more easily. But we also said that that enum value seems to represent an integer value as well. So could we actually check to see if Monday is equal to zero? Well, when we go to run this sample application, let's see the results that we get. All right, and here is the output from our program. So like I said, I have example one being printed at the top, but Monday is the result of us doing console write line and then the enum value of Monday. So that means that we're calling to string on that variable under the hood, and when we call to string on an enum value, it will give us the name of that enum. So that's kind of interesting. If we wanted to, we could seemingly easily convert the enum value to a string that is the name of the enum. However, what's even more interesting is the following two lines that print false. And that's where we were checking if the enum value is equal to the string Monday, and it turns out that it's not. So you can't just say Monday as a string and equate it to that enum value. Similarly, zero is also not equal to Monday. So that means if you wanted to do equality checks between zero or the string Monday to the enum value of Monday, we can't just do it that way. We're not able to use a string or an integer strictly to do a comparison. Let's go look at another example. So I have example two on my screen here, and what I've done between lines nine and 12 
is I'm casting an integer value of 0, 1, 3, or 5 to the day of the week enum type. So this is going to be an interesting experiment for us because when we were checking on line 6, if day of the week was equal to 0 for Monday, we saw false. So we know that the enum value Monday is not equal to 0, but are we able to cast integers to being an enum value? Well, let's go see what happens when we run this. And just to call it out, I am skipping over some numbers here, so we'll do 0, 1, 3, and 5. So that's just my disclaimer because the results we see may not be contiguous. All right, and here is the result from our second example. So we can see that when we cast 0 to being the enum type, we do get Monday. And similarly, when we go to day 1, that's going to be Tuesday, 3 is Thursday, and 5 is Saturday. So while we cannot do a direct equality check between an integer and an enum, what we can do is cast the integer value to the enum value. So if that works for integers, what about for strings? Well, example 3 I have here, but I have it commented out because it in fact does not work. If I go and uncomment this code for example 3, we'll see that line 20 actually has a compilation error on it and we're not allowed to cast a string of Monday to the enum type day of the week. So we can do integers to day of the week but we cannot do a string the same way. So that's going to wrap up some of the basics of working with enums. Now there's more to be discussed with enums because in this video what we looked at was that an enum seemingly represents both a string and an integer at the same time. But what we noticed was that it looks more like it's a developer facing string when we go to use it. So calling to string in this case gave us a day of the week, but we could cast integers to the enum type, but we could not cast strings to the enum type. So in the follow up video, what we're going to look at is how we can do some parsing and type conversion. So stay tuned to watch that next and we'll follow up with some other considerations for enum usage. So stay tuned and you can check those out next. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.